Good morning, welcome back to Grandad's Art Space with Terry. Um, this is part four and I hope the last part of painting a Covenanter, Scottish Covenanter up. Um, sorry it's taken so long but I've had trouble with my back and haven't been able to move around too well. Right, where did we get to? Oh yes, we put all the base coats on. So now we're up to um, putting the the shade on and for this the first part I use the one that seems to be most people use is the Agrax Year Shade I like it I like the color of it it's a brownish brownish color and I'll just put it all over the model just sort of from his hat. I can't see what I'm doing here. Let's get under. Even at this scale, I struggle to see what I'm painting. I'm glad I don't do anything smaller. Well, I could do anything smaller. So, how is everybody this morning? It's wet. It's raining here in Birmingham, England. But, yeah, who cares? And a lot you can do about it is a you need the rain if we didn't have rain we'd all be moaning we'd all be struggling with we'd be looking for water to drink we're very fortunate in this country that we do get enough rain all right do the pipe as well Okay. All over him. Just shove it on. As long as you don't have massive great puddles of it. Try and coax it into the into the more re darker recesses. And take it off the the flat surfaces, you're fine. But with these, because they're so dark. doesn't really make a great deal of difference because you can't can't see a lot of it on the flat surfaces uh, all the way over every little area make sure you get in between the boots as well because this is where It aids in showing all the detail. Right, that's that. Oop. That's the shading on. We'll now leave him to dry. So I'll be back in a bit when he's dry. Right, welcome back. Um, now I've altered them slightly because I'm doing this one now with the with the um, buff coat on. Now um, do the first highlight of the buff coat. Now I know uh, I'm using um, brown sand. I know everybody sort of screams out contrast, contrast. You've got to do contrast. Well, personally, I don't like that much contrast. Um, I know they're only little figures, um, and sort of like people say that you know if you don't put any contrast on them, you can't see them. But as far as I'm concerned, you look at some of these things and they look. They look like some sort of weird statue with all the blotches of colour over them. And I don't like that. I hate it. So what I do is I go over them, put in a dull colour down. It's, it's lighter than the, the colour underneath, admittedly. But it's not that light. That I'm getting heavy lines. What I class as heavy lines. Same as I don't like this black pinny that people do. That's everybody to their own. I know some of you guys do. But you don't see black in nature. You don't see black underneath everything all the time. 
And if it is dark, it's a dark grey. It's not black. So it, it sort of like puts me off. So I don't do it. So say, everybody to their own. Some love it. Uh, all I do is I just fill in an area and I leave little bits showing through, which most people do. But I'll do I'll do little lines where I think highlight would hit rather than. Just sort of like staying to see, like for instance, underneath his arm here, yeah, where his hand is, his elbow would be cutting the light out. You can see a shadow there already. So I don't put highlight down there. That's where a shadow would naturally be falling. And I'll come down the side of it. Just me. I'm weird. I'll try to, where I can, I'll try to speckle it so it's more, instead of having sharp lines, I'll try to leave areas that are more speckled. I'll show you what I mean. Like that. You see? So you've got a defined edge. Okay. Still there. The light would be touching it. Right. I'm do. I can't do the boots. Right, okay, that's that one. There. This one I done earlier. So you can see, see what I mean. Right. So it's the actual buff coat is really looking like a buff coat, rather than a a painted um, contrasting light and dark or light and shadow if you get what I mean I don't make sense half the time my wife says that hmm. so. right so that's what I do with those so, he's drying off nicely you can see it's starting to look like a real buff coat. Now, I'll be back in a minute when I come to do his, his, his jacket. Okay, welcome back. Right, now for their doublets and their breeches, whereas I mixed my own hot and grey, I now mix hot and grey but it's slightly lighter. You can see it's more greyish than on the greenish side. So there's a lot more red in that. So I use, it's just, um, I can't remember how much I put into that. Um, it just hit and miss, just keep trying until you get the color you like really. Uh, it's natural fact thinking about it, this may well be a little too light. We'll see. There it goes. And all I do with this, I don't block in again. As you see, some painters going over, just leaving an edge, and building highlights up, coming further and further into the centre of the colour. I literally just 
over building putting lines in where again where I think light would hit so it's just I just prefer it just the way I play probably why it takes me so long to do a figure To me, this is speed painting. Gonna do it, do it properly. Why mess? Why do half-hearted attempts at something? At the end of the day, you know, these figures will be on show. On the table, and other people will be looking at them. And I'm not going to the point of rubric counting, of you know, trying to get the exact colour buttons, the exact type of buttons for, you know, like in the Napoleonic period where buttons played a big part in the officers who had how many forget that the 28 mil figures for crying out loud but certainly trying to get them as good as you can yeah not have to sort of people sort of like standing there going whoa look at these figures aren't they I'm not interested in that. I just want the figure two and it's representing that regiment, then we should do it justice. I think anyway. You know, that regiment or battalion or whoever they actually went into battle oh thank you darling cup of tea just arrived yeah um, and they gave their lives that the next generation may be free to live in freedom and they still do nowadays I think that if you're going to do representation of their uniforms and do them justice then do the best job you can don't go at it like you don't care and I know that most people that I've seen anyway on YouTube they put a lot of time a lot of effort into producing top quality paint jobs on their figures and I appreciate looking at that right there you go the first coat sorry that's the first coat on his doublet and breeches but sorry not the first coat highlight and it's starting to to come together so i'll do the next one and then i'll get back to you welcome back right the next job i will be looking at is doing his bread bag that's done in um First highlighting beige. Some of these I say first highlight. Some of them I only give them one highlight. It all depends what it looks like. And while I'm doing his bread bag, I do those little ties on the front of his doublet as well. 
those things. The ribbons. See it. Yeah, there you go. And I'm still only using me the old Airfix Humble Brush. I haven't changed to anything spectacular. I've just got it over his hair now. So it's black. We've had some good stuff this week online. The plastic crack pod Monday. I always have to be careful how I say that now. That was quite an interesting evening. And we had. Um, Oh dear. One with Kaiser and Johnny B. I can't remember that. Modeling for advantage. Tuesday. I missed that one. I had to listen to it last night. That was an interesting one as well. Right, at the same time, I'll go and do his leggings because they're down there. As well as people putting some really really interesting videos up I haven't watched them all as yet but I've, I've watched a few some cracking stuff going on at the moment keep it up guys right so that's his where is he lost him that's his bread bag okay Right, be back when that dries. Okay, next I'll look at his bonnet. Now that's um, a medium blue. Um, and all I do is I just see where the actual sculpt lines are. And I'll just try and mirror those. Sometimes they're quite thick, other times they're very, very small. Put on the edge, put on some lighter, just catch it, but you know, oh, just put them there. Like I said before, cloth. Cloth doesn't keep a massive highlight off. Oh, there is there is a certain amount of highlight, yes. Light that bounces off, of course there is. But it's not huge. like that, do the other one, right on top, I don't normally bother varnishing my figures because acrylic paint, polymer paint, is basically plastic. But I have noticed changing over from the plastic to the metal pipes, it is not the best. It, it, 
you touch it with anything and it slightly scratches it, it's coming off. So I shall be varnishing these guys. Well, I've got to varnish them all now. <laughs> it's a lot of men. Right, okay. I'll be back in a minute when he's dry. Okay, right. Down to his boots. Um, for this, I normally use burnt umber. Underneath the sole, just a lot of this gets covered up anyway when you put the ground covering on. So I'm not uh, too worried if I don't hit every area. And then a little bit around the top of the edge of the boot. Shoe, I'm gonna put on. Just try and pick out a few of those highlights, but not many. And then just try and catch. And that's it. It's the boot stuff. I'll see you in a minute. Right, down to the last bit, which is his flesh. And for that, I use dark flesh. This part of it has come in. I said before, I don't paint eyes. Don't bother. Bit of oh, water in the brush. Above his eye, then the nose, and then the cheeks, and then a small bit under the Chin, so it looks like that. You see it? Okay. And then his hands, it just sort of like puts a bit in where where the joints are, and then just put them on the top. Both of you, one of the thumb. Can't see the others. I don't bother. The light wouldn't be under there, apart from just this, this one, this one. And the bit at the back there. And then down on his leg. Seem done. Okay. Right. Let him dry. Be back in a minute. Okay. Uh, I've just gone over the bonnets with just to make them stand out a little bit with a bit of Andrea blue. Just where the, the curls go in and the piece of heather I've just gone over with a little bit of jean steeler purple just to make that pop out a bit the swords and the bottle uh, I use gun metal just to finish that off and the the belt and strapping uh, I just go over that in a little bit of saddle brown just to finish that off so that's those um, sorted now, I'll just let these dry and then I'll get back to you. Right. Okay, at this point, 
what I do is I'll go back over the face with some Reichland Flesh Shade. On the hands, obviously. And just in my mind, pushes it back out a bit. Takes those. highlights just down a little bit and on this one I've got a glaring glaring light face and it's just what I like Can't see anybody ever wanting to buy my figures, so uh, it doesn't make any difference. Just do what I like. I'm not going to win any awards, but I ain't bothered. Just enjoy painting. Like that. Okay. Let them dry, and I'll get back to you for the last bit. Okay, and the very last bit is. I do what a few people do. Is I like to dirty my soldiers up. They're in a battle, not a banquet. So what I use is a little bit of deck tan, and I just dry brush over the top, just to pick some bit of the detail in there. Mock, dust, and just so it adds that little bit extra. Picks out all the ridges against the dark nicely. Point, this is where I do the hair as well. And I'm trying to pick out individual strands with a brush, just dry brush it all over the face a bit. That we are done. One Scots Covenant to Pikeman. I hope you enjoyed watching that very, very long, probably very laborious, very putting people to sleep video set of videos. Um, I shall. Maybe attempt to do another one in the future, but we'll see how it goes. I'll just show you the one of one that I've done with the buff coat. That's what one turns out like with the buff coat. So the Scots, they didn't wear armor, so don't do them with armor if you want to be accurate. Uh, why? Uh, I don't know why they never wore armor. Never asked me. Miller might know. So with that, have a nice day. Take care. Stay safe. God bless. See you soon. Bye.